Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 41 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, uh, where today I have expanded my mining contraption just a smidge, um, and, and I was about to configure my laser nose, and I'm like, you know what, now's a good time to show off one of the new features of Laser.io, the card cloner. Uh, this is a, I'm pretty happy with this guy. Well, I guess we'll see if I'm happy with it, because I've never actually used it in a survival world. I, I added this to the mod, but I never really, like, set it up. Uh, so the card co uh, cloner is pretty cool. Um, you left click on a card, and then that will save the details of the card onto the card cloner. So for example, the card cloner has just copied the fact that this item card is set to extract mode on channel zero with no filter and four overclockers in it. Um, and now I can go over here, place a card into the slot, and then right click the card cloner. And you'll notice that it used four overclockers. So it applied all those settings. So it set the transfer amount and the speed and ticks and all that good stuff. Um, so uh, just right click to paste it. And assuming that you have enough items um, inside your card holder there, it should snag all the uh, card overclockers for you. So that's a good way to copy and paste uh, card settings. Pretty happy with that setup. Uh, it, it works pretty well, apparently. I guess we'll find out. I, it seems like it's working. I don't know. This is literally the first time I've ever used it outside of my development environment where I wrote the code for this. So it's maybe looks like it's working. That's cool, right? Yeah, I'm down. So hey, let's uh, let's get this stuff, uh, this show on the road again, right? So um, I'm doing that. I'm getting this all added in here. Um, that's cool. That's cool, and that's cool. So uh, I, I already mined a bunch, which is why like there's so much junk inside these chests, as you can see. Uh, we clearly have a much larger area now uh, for storing things. Uh, let me make sure that my super glue is configured correctly. I super glued, uh, let's see, from here to there. That should be cool. So I, I had to super glue, uh, I super glued all these guys together, so that's good. Super glue has a max limit size, so I did here, and then I did here. So you can see they kind of overlap at this block, and that seems to be working pretty well. Um, once all these chests are emptied, and, and right now I'm noticing that like this is just not emptying fast. Like we don't drain out of our ender chest fast enough. So let's go solve that problem real quick. Uh, so for that, what I think I'll do, import busing just may not be fast enough. Though, it's funny, because like I came here now and it's like suddenly an empty ender chest. So maybe, I don't know. But what I'm going to do is yoink that guy, and probably yoink that guy. And uh, let's, instead of that, can we do, um, can we, can we potentially do uh, interfaces? That might be a way to go. Let's try, let's try an interface or two. Uh, and maybe that would be sufficient to get stuff going, right? Um, that could be cool. So what I'm going to have here is uh, let's put you there and a nice little cable hookup, okay? And then we'll have a node between you guys. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say you're going to on the interface side insert and on the ender chest side you're going to extract. And you know what? Let's go ahead and just, oops, I left clicked. I didn't mean to do that. Oh well, doesn't matter. Uh, you're going to go in here and you're going to be boop boop. Cool. So now you are going to extract a stack of tick from there straight into the interface. And then interface is kind of like instantly do stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it'll be faster, I think than uh, extracting in with an import bus. Uh, now, if I wanted to, what I could do on the extract side is have a few more. Uh, so now's a good time for me to program my card overclockers, right? Because I'm tired of not having them automated. Uh, so for laser IO, I want you to know how to make card overclockers. And while you're at it, learn how to make node overclockers. Uh, because this is a good segue into how node overclockers work and what they do. Um, so let me get two of them should be fine and I'll get like 20 of you and that should be cool. Okay. Um, that should be cool. Okay. So node overclockers are a little complex to understand, but they're not hard. So insert cards don't do anything 
from the concept of block ticks, right? So this node has to tick. So every in-game tick, it's gonna do something, right? One thing per tick. Insert cards don't do anything. They just allow items to go somewhere. Um, so we, the uh, extract cards, on the other hand, do tick. So the extract cards will pull items out of the adjacent inventory, uh, X number of items, the transfer amount, so 64 items, every so many ticks. So every tick, it's gonna pull items out. The node sides here can only operate on one card uh, per tick if it does something. So for example, if I put another card in here, right, and I will copy this setting and paste this setting, um, right now, only this card will function per tick. So realistically, having the second card in here does nothing. It can't, it can't function, it can't do anything. Um, and the reason for that is only one card per tick will operate. So it'll only operate on the first card. If this card didn't have anything to do, it would move on to this one. So for example, if this was like filtered, it was like, hey, pull out saplings, right? If there were no saplings in the inventory, it would move on to the next card. And like, let's say this one was pull out wood. If it found wood, it would operate on this card and be done, right? And it wouldn't get to uh, get to this card, right? Now, if you want all three cards to operate in the same tick, you can add node overclockers. So adding a single node overclocker allows both cards, these two, to work at the same time. Uh, and adding another node overclocker here allows all three cards to operate in the same tick. So with this configuration, we will be literally extracting three stacks of items per tick and inserting them into the same insert side, which is over here, right? So that's how node overclockers work. It's it's rare that you need that speed, but every now and then you wanna be able to do things, right? Like being able to do three stacks per tick is pretty cool. And that's, you know, something you can do with laser IO. So let's pop out here again. Uh, I'm gonna let you let this thing run. Uh, so let's flip the lever, right? Let this thing start moving again. Uh, he should start moving forward and I'll turn the lever off because I really only want him to do one operation. So as we've seen before, this thing's gonna move forward nine blocks and now it's gonna mine. Uh, I actually made these, it, it's another nine by nine. So it's nine by nine, nine by nine, nine by nine. So, so 81 times three blocks uh, is what? That would be uh, a whole bunch, right? Eight, 16, 24, so 243 uh, blocks is what we're mining at a time all the way down to bedrock. So that's that's pretty cool. That's a lot of blocks. We're doing pretty good at this point, yeah? And I probably could expand this further if I wanted to. Like, I don't know what the limit is. I'm sure there's some kind of limit uh, to how many blocks can be in a contraption. I just have no idea what it is. Uh, but I'm gonna come back in a minute after this mines to bedrock, and then we will see if, um, if extracting from the ender chest is faster now that I've got three stacks per tick being extracted um, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Cool. All right. So back in a moment. And then in today's episode, what I really want to get working on is I want to work towards being able to get nether stars. Um, so I want to get, uh, some form of, of wither, uh, skeleton skull farming going. And then after that, we'll work towards getting nether stars. I might, I might want to do some experience farming as well as part of that, because I, I, I feel like we could combine those two things. Like I want to get a whole bunch more experience than I have. So I feel like we could probably combine experience farming with wither skeleton farming. Sound cool? All right, back in just a moment once this mining is complete. All right, so our thing should be coming up now. And you know what? I realized I didn't put cards back in these guys, so I should reconfigure them. be you and that would be you so we should have like ton oh wow look how fast that was i think we're already done i think we already emptied out all these chests holy cow that worked <laughs> three stacks per tick it worked it worked really really well uh holy cow that was fast okay so yeah now you see why i did that i i was ready to show you how fast it was going to be and it happened too fast for me <laughs> that is awesome oh i love it I love, I love ridiculous. I like, 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 I like when things are ridiculous sometimes. Um, and that was pretty ridiculous, right? Like, I, I'm just a fan of when things are ridiculous. And that's what that was. I, the, the number of resources we just mined up here were a lot. If anybody wants to do the math on, uh, you know, from Y level 70 to Y level 6, negative 64, 283, is that what I said it was, blocks? Like, yeah, no, that's going to be a lot. No, 243 uh, blocks 
times what? Yeah, a lot. It's going to be a lot. So times 136-ish. Is that right? I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's that's a lot of blocks. So hey, we've got a lot of resources coming in now. That's pretty nice. All I need to do is really get that thing chunk loaded. So with that, let's start looking at how we're going to do Wither Skeletons. So for Wither Skeletons, we have Wither Skeleton spawners uh, that we found from Apotheosis. Remember, they were up on... Uh, they were up on those rocket ship things, like one of these dudes, right? We found quite a few of them, actually. And the deal with this is, if you silk touch mine an apotheosis, uh, a spawner, right? Because there's a few, we have a few spawners. Um, we got we got zombie spawner and phantom and phantom and hoglin and uh, all kinds of them. And so if you mine it without silk touch, you get broken spawners from Ender IO. If you mine it with silk touch, you get spawners from apotheosis. And apotheosis has a whole spawn modification mechanic basically once you uh get that spawner you can add items to it to make it better um so example you can throw uh, a soul lantern into it and it will make the spawner ignore light levels so it'll spawn monsters whether or not there's light affecting the thing okay if you um add another star it ignores the uh player requirement so normally in vanilla minecraft mob spawners require a player to be nearby in order for them to spawn their mobs if you throw another star on the thing it ignores mob players nearby and it just spawns mobs all the time right um and then you can modify how many entities um it can maximally have nearby or how many it can spawn at once right so you can add different items there now if you want to reduce things uh sometimes there's like a minus right so uh this adds redstone control this reduces how long um how many ticks between spawns you can get really ridiculous with this like completely shenanigans stupid how much this can spawn and we're absolutely going to do that because like i said dire likes ridiculous it's a thing that i like sometimes um, so you can, you can modify all kinds of attributes here by adding or removing things, right? As you can see here. Um, normally if you throw nether quartz, I think in your offhand when you're attaching stuff, it'll do the opposite, right? So like, um, this will remove the ignoring light level rule if you do a soul lantern and nether quartz, right? Um, so with just a soul lantern, it adds the ignore light rule with a soul lantern and nether quartz, it's going to remove the ignore light rule. So... That's what we're going to do. So let's set up like a nice little mob spawning room, right? So I'm thinking we're going to have a room uh, that should um, have a mob spawner in the middle of it. It's going to spawn uh, a bunch of mobs and then we're going to kill them. And then we're going to collect uh, both their mob drops, the Wither Skeleton Skulls, and the experience. And all that experience will go towards something like this, where we can start building up large amounts of EXP that we can uh, then, you know use for apotheosis enchanting and get like some really op enchants and that would be fun sound cool all right so first things first let me think about where i'm going to want that to be uh and then second thing second let's start building um the the spawn room and i want to think about how i'm going to kill the mobs um i really really wanted to do um the gateways mob for a mob room like uh and i might still do that um but there is no gateway for wither skeleton skulls, right? Um, so I don't see anything for withers, uh, wither skeletons, right? So we're going to need, if we do want to do gateways, which I do want to do gateways, um, I, have an, I have a neat idea in my mind where basically um, we could have the A system track how many items of a certain mob drop we have. So like zombie flesh, right? If we drop below a thousand zombie flesh, start activating uh, a zombie gateway. I don't know if you can automate these though. Like, like... I'm not sure if they allow a fake player to place them in the world, but we'll see. Maybe. I'm not sure. We haven't uh, figured it out. But long story short, I might play with gateways in the future for some kind of automation if it's possible to automate gateways. But there is none for Wither Skeleton Skulls, so we're going to have to do that. So in terms of mob killing, uh, there's mob grinding utils, uh, which is a good one. I like, I like mob grinding utils. My only downside with mob grinding utils is you have to do the fan thing, and the fan thing is always a little bit annoying. Um, I don't like, I don't like the fan thing. So that's one option for auto killing, um, and, and collecting the experience. The other one is, uh, industrial foregoing, which we will get into, but I haven't done yet. And that requires getting into plastics and all that stuff. So we don't have, we don't have that set up yet, but we will probably have to get into foregoing sooner than later. Um, 
But that one, eh, maybe, maybe, uh, I'll consider it. But I really do like, I like Mob Masher because that, uh, from Mob Grinding Utils, gives you, like, a really nice, um, fortune, uh, thing. Like, you get, you get a really nice amount of, uh, of, of fortune-y things. So I'm gonna think about for a minute, off camera here, how I want to do this. I'm leaning towards Mob Grinding Utils, but we'll see. I'll see if there's something else that I can try, too. So I'm checking out, uh, Kivy Blocks from Zycraft. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. They're pretty cool looking. Debating which of those two I like better. They're both good. They're both good. Not too shabby. All right, so what I'm thinking is, um, basically, we have a, a relatively decent sized um, structure here, maybe like a nine by nine, right? Um, and then the, the center of which will obviously kind of be the door. Right? Does that sound, that sound fair? Um, and then we can, we can just do like a nice little column dude here. Does five blocks sound cool? Or is that too tall, you think? That might be too tall. We don't need this to be particularly large. Maybe we'll split the diff and do four. That should be good. Now I'm probably going to need a little bit more of these. Are we out of the red the red stuff already? Ugh, that's not good. We might be out of the red stuff already. Well, we'll figure it out. A little bit more mining in the mining dimension if I need to. That's fine. I might not make this all one one color too. I might because it seems like a little bit busy would be the right phrase. I don't know, maybe. Um, what I need, what I might do is like intersperse some like regular kivy bricks in there. Like maybe like mostly red kivy with, or, or mostly kivy with like a few interspersed reds. That could be cool looking, right? Um, so what we could do is, and again, Dyer just trying to make things look a little bit nice, even though he's not generally known for that because yeah. I'm trying though, right? I'm trying. Uh, and then what we could have is uh, some red kivy bricks that like just kind of like show up in a few places, like a random randomization is cool, right? Like you want a little bit of randomness to it. Is that neat looking? Kind of cool, right? Kind of cool. Maybe. I don't know. Looks kind of nifty. I have no idea. I have no clue. I'm trying though. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, and then we will we will build a gadget our way towards uh, a roof. Okay, and then you can probably intersperse uh, a few. A few things there that looks pretty cool. Now we're going to want to like make sure that this is going to be um, big enough uh, for the for the spawner to work. Uh, so for that. We're going to want to have an idea of what the Wither Skeleton Spawner's uh, functionality is going to look like. So let's note the things that we're going to need to make this the way I want it to be. So I'm ultimately going to want a Soul Lantern eventually and another star, but obviously that's not something that we have access to just yet. Gas Tears and Fermented Spider Eyes, that's going to be a thing. Ooh, definitely like the idea of wool. Wool, wool for sure. Um, any wool, just regular old wool. I'm going to put that on there. Um, no AI? Maybe that shouldn't be terrible. Uh, sugar for sure. Prismarine crystals. We probably don't want that. We want to see what the activation range looks like. We might want to actually reduce the activation range. Redstone control. Yes. Spawn delay is going to be a thing. Dragon egg. Obviously, I don't know if I want to use my dragon egg yet on that. I don't know if we need that. It just ignores all spawn conditions. Uh, plus one spawn range. Um, activation range how far a player can be before spawning stops 
Okay, yeah, Blaze Rod is activation, it's spawn range. That's how far away mobs can spawn from the spawner. Okay, that's fair. Um, sweet. So let's start with, uh, most importantly, is going to be the redstone comparator. Like, that's going to be the big, the big one. Because that will make it so that the spawner can respond to a redstone signal, right? So I pop that in there, right? And now it's redstone controlled. And it will only spawn wither skeletons if it's got a redstone signal applied to it, right? How cool is that? Neat. Uh, now we can probably, oh, hello, there you are. Sweet. Now it just so happens that the weather skeleton spawner that we have, oh my goodness, I'm actually like hurting a lot. There we go, much healed, thank you. These guys, these guys seem to hurt a little bit, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not every day that you get a weather skeleton spawner, so beggars can't be choosers. Uh, I'm assuming that there's like a light level thing, so they're only gonna be allowed to spawn as it sits right now in that red area back there, I suspect, right? And we can see the minimum spawn delay, the maximum spawn delay, the spawn count, max entities, activation range, spawn range. So spawn range is four, um, which I'm assuming is a radius. So that would be like one, two, three, four, and it can't spawn inside the walls. So I think a spawn range of four should be sufficient. And we'll see if that turns out to be true. But I think four should be okay. Four, four should be perfect. If I need to, I can shrink it down using a blaze rod and quartz, right? Um, so redstone control, good. Right now it's only gonna spawn in the red spots, but once I add the soul lantern, it should be able to spawn it anywhere, uh, which is probably what I'm gonna wanna do once I have this room fully, fully prepared and good. So, you know, I usually use fans uh, from from mob grinding utils to push mobs around. I'm gonna try dark utilities vector plates. Um, so dark utilities adds a bunch of cool stuff. Let's see. There's there's the vector plates. There's there's damage plates and all kinds of other stuff. Um, is there a way to make the vector plate only push mobs and not players? Because that would be kind of cool. Mob filter a block only players can pass through. Yeah, sounds neat. Uh, we can try with the vector plate. Vector plates are neato. Are we low on sugar? We might ish be. And did we? We have plenty of slime for now. That's right. I remember we did the slime thing, right? So if we set this up, um, and I should probably sleep through this night real quick, because the goal here is we want to use mob grinding utils to kill the wither skeletons, right? That's the plan. Uh, and in order to do that, right, we're going to need the mob masher that's also going to have some of these upgrades. And we should probably get a few more versions of these, right? So how about... Am I out of gold? I might be out of gold. I did use a lot of gold recently. I mean, we've got we've got some that we can process. So I should, what I should really be doing at some point, now that we've got auto mining-ish, we've got auto mining-ish, right? Like we've kind of got auto mining going on. Um, I should really be processing my ores and I should set up like an ore processing thing that's not this. This is this is fine, but I should probably like automate things a little better than they are. Oh, that's right. I need more gold. <laughs> Dire, please. There we go. And then gold. That should be cool. And I should get more vibrance going on. Um, only because, like, you know, we know we're going to want that. Now, that's going to take a minute to process because we have to wait for all the gold to be done before it starts inserting those items. But there we go. And then I can do this and that and put these in here to keep that up and running. Sweet. All right. Uh, so looting we're good on. Uh, sharpness and beheading. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more of these, right? And then uh, we're gonna want one, two, three, four, five, six more of these to get 10 of these. So you get 10 upgrades per, right? So we're gonna want uh, four times four, 16. I think I counted correctly there. Hooray, I did. Sweet, so now we've got 
looting, sharpness, and beheading. So this will extra looting, this will better chance of dropping mob heads, and this will be like much more damage. We combine that all on the mob masher, that will be a very good way to kill wither skeletons and get lots and lots of skulls. Cool. Uh, wither skeletons are always two blocks tall, so I can stick this here. Uh, and then what we can do is do our vector plates, right? So our goal is something like this, and it'll push the mobs, you know, towards towards the vector plate, right? And I don't know that I need to have one here, but I'll put it there. And then what I can do is something like this. Do we think um, we can build and gadget these guys or what? Like if I do that, it should, in theory, I'm, I'm guessing that these guys, um, yeah, that's cool. Boom. That's neat. Now the yellow ones are faster, by the way, uh, and then the red ones are even faster, and then the blue ones are like stupid fast. But I don't need all that, right? All I need is green. Green levels of speed is good, okay? Now, wherever mobs spawn, they will be pushed, boom, right into the vector plate, or right into the, the mob masher. And that should be, that should be, that should be cool, right? And I think as a player, if you hold shift, you won't get moved. So if you don't want to be moved around as a player, just hold shift and you'll be good. Cool. So I made it green because we don't need it to be stupid hyper fast. And also, if I walk in here, I'm not going to instantly be zipped right onto that thing, right? Now that's a problem. Uh, what I, I don't want um, the mobs to get stuck on top of that. So I think I can vector plate on top of you. Am I right about that? Right? So then if they do happen to stand on top of the thing, they'll get pushed off of it. Ha, <laughs> that's cool. Ah, that's nifty. All right, cool. Uh, what do we got by way of redstone wiring? Um, I'm thinking about how I want this thing to work. And my brain says, uh, I would like... Hmm, how do I want this to work? Good question. Uh, I don't think we need a light in this room, right? Because I don't care if there's lights. In fact, I might want this room lit up, like, all times. Um, so what I could do... Did I ever get, like, the, the mage light spell? I like that light. That's a, that's a cool-looking spell. Let's go get that real quick. Let's go get mage light. Conjure mage light. Okay, I just need a lantern... And a torch. There you go. I already know the spell. Okay, I did get it. <laughs> My bad. Uh, so how about number 10? 9, 8 is where I have touch AoE grow. Oh, 7, I have a mage light. Okay, projectile mage light. Oh, I did do that already. Dire, please. Right, then we can do that, that, and that. How's that look? Is that going to be cool looking? Yeah, that should do nicely. And then we don't have to worry about the fans, right? Because I never, like, fans are cool, but I wanted to try something different. And I think this might be a little bit better than fans overall. All right, now let's do um, some redstone-y control of things. Um, let's go underground. We go one more down, and I'm going to mining laser my way under here. So we should be, like, right underneath things, right? Um, and, like, roughly here-ish. That's a vector plate. There's my wither skeleton spawner. Okay. Uh, so you're going to get a redstone control. So how do I want to do this? Do we want to do more red? Do we want to do laser IO? Um... Mm. Um, how about Enderio? Does Enderio have its redstone conduiting yet? It does have redstone conduits. Cool. Because I might be able to facade this. Would that be neat? Uh, let me do one more set of those. So can I facade from Enderio? Does Enderio not have facades yet? They don't have facades yet, then maybe I don't want to do it this way. Mm. 
I'm not sure if they do. Is the painter in yet? Is that what it was in, in Android? I don't see the painter in there either. I, I'm either missing it. Um, conduit binder is also how you made them in the past. So they may not exist yet. All right, so maybe I don't want to do redstone conduits. Redstone conduits are cool, but I might not want to use them here. I'm trying to find something that like I'll be able to use as a redstone lever and like put it here and like you won't see the cable. Like I don't need to break this block, right? Um, so I can kind of like have a lever on the outside that turns it on and off. Mm, I might just need to laser IO it or, uh, or something else. Because I don't think there's anything that I can think of at the moment that's going to let me do that. So let's, um, if I did more red and just did uh, U, right, is that is that doable? So let's say that under here, And then we ran this across here like that. So I'm assuming that if I have a lever here, it's not going to transmit through that block. But if I have a lever here, it should. And oh, that's uh, that's disabling those guys. So we don't want that, actually. Uh, what we're probably going to want is if I make you this... Would that be cool? That works. That works, right? And then once the skeletons spawn, right? Let's get the lantern in there, the soul lantern. This will make it, okay, there we go. So now we don't care about mob, right, see? And now they're getting stuck back there and that's what we want, okay? And then we can come back here to this guy, uh, and he can just have a lever straight on his back for now. And then they're, they're going to get ground up. And they have a little extra health than a normal wither skeleton would. I'll see if I can find a better skeleton spawner before I really upgrade this one. But at least for now, we get the idea, right? Like, that's going to be pretty cool. Um, look at you really trying to get to me, aren't you? What I might want to do is like, can I rotate this with a wrench of some kind? Do you wrench? Yeah, but that's the wrong way. So like, how about you go that way, right? Yeah, look at him. He's really trying to get to me. But if I'm not there, he should no longer care about me. And then he'll just get pushed into the thing. Yeah, so if they're aggroed on me, they, they can kind of walk. I could upgrade these all to yellows. I could do that. I might do that. We'll see. But that's pretty cool. And then I can turn this off with a lever. I like that. It's a pretty good design. It's not terrible. All right, so let's wrap that up. Now, the only concern I have is I'm not seeing any Wither Skeleton Skulls yet. Um, we obviously need some kind of vacuum hopper of some kind that's going to pick up that stuff for us, right? Um, and that can sit right back here for the time being, right? And he'll vacuum up any drops that occur, especially if my magnet's not on. Um, and this can be way and will be way faster. But for the time being, I just want to validate that I'm getting skulls from this. So I'm going to stand back here, let that happen. And I just want to make sure we get at least one wither skeleton skull. 
Because I'm assuming these Wither Skeletons can drop Wither Skeleton Skulls. But they are, they are obviously, like, in some way, shape, or form, unique Wither Skeletons with all those... With all that armor and stuff. Ow! Excuse me, sir. Rude. Are you not picking up items? Or are you doing the thing where... You might be doing the thing where... I might not want... I might not want... Yeah, see, it's getting stuck there. It's, pre it's preventing the absorption hopper from picking it up. If I break this... Can the Absorption Hopper pick it up? Or is the Absorption Hopper just not... Maybe the Absorption Hopper responds to a redstone signal? Does it? If I turn you off, do you pick up things? Oh, you do! Okay. And hey, look, Wither Skeleton Skull. That tells me that we're working. So I'm cool with that, right? Um, so let's wrap up the episode here and come back next time. Uh, and what we'll do is uh, be ready to do this better, right? Because this setup is, is obviously temporary. But we've got Wither Skeleton Skulls, which tells me we will definitely get Wither Skeleton Skulls from this drop. And also, by the way, I haven't put any upgrades in. Once I do that, we're going to get, like, way more drops and skulls. Yeah, I should probably do that real quick just to show you guys how much better that's going to be. Um, so you guys all go in there. All right. Let's sleep through this night. Am I going to Am I gonna pass the night? Oh, little baby zombie. How rude. Little baby zombie's like, nope, you're not sleeping through no nights. Hey, did you, like, steal my thing, or what? You totally stole my sleeping bag! How rude! How hilarious is that, though? He stole my sleeping bag. Okay. We'll sleep up here. Haha. -ha. May not rest now. Monsters are nearby. Fine. I'll sleep over here. I'm trying to show people things. Zombies getting in my way. Very rude. Okay, so now, uh, if I turn this on, right, um, and we can take this stuff out of here because that's not really needed no more. And then we do this. Just get a few extras. Again, this will be stupidly fast once I upgrade it. Yeah, you'll see. But see how much faster they die now because of the sharpness upgrades? Like, it's basically like one or two hits, right? And they immediately die. And then also, look at how ridiculously uh, many mob drops. We just got like 11 skulls. All right, Dial with 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.